Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at Overlord, the newest DLC out for the Space 4X strategy game, Stellaris. Before we jump into the game, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the folks over at Paradox, the developers of Stellaris, for reaching out to me and sponsoring this video. Additionally, if Stellaris looks like a game you think you might be interested in, I highly recommend you check it out this weekend because Paradox is running a promo where you can download the base game of Stellaris for free. All you have to do is click the link in the description and you'll be taken to the Steam page where you can download the base game of Stellaris for free and play all weekend. And without further ado, let's jump in to Stellaris Overlord. Okay, so first things first, we gotta go ahead and jump in here and start a new game. Uh, we're gonna be doing a single player game. Uh, we are going to choose a pre-built empire, so uh, if you're not familiar with Stellaris, when you first start a new game, uh, you get a whole bunch of options on the left side. These are all pre-built empires that have different races, different government types, um, or I guess species is probably a better term here. Uh, be they lithioids, they've got plantoids, they've got machines, uh, reptile species, uh, humanoids. We're going to be a humanoid species. Uh, we're going to be a technocracy, so we're going to kind of be a, uh, a technology-focused dictatorship. We're not going to mess with the different traits here of the dictatorship, uh, which have different impacts on our uh, empire. Uh, we also apparently are repugnant, which I don't know if that's based on our, you know, our evolution of humanity, because it says we're humanoid, but we don't look human. Uh, but we are going to edit a couple of things here because I do want to show off some of the new features of Overlord. So uh, we're going to change our origin here. Let's change our appearance too. Um, we'll go with the bearded guy here. Uh, so we'll be the bearded guy. You can, again, this is like how you customize your, your particular uh, civilization. It's pretty easy to make a whole bunch of different uh, choices and whatnot. Uh, but I want to focus in on the origins because this is where things are new. So uh, the game comes with pre-built origin stories. Uh, you know, you can have a prosperous unification, which I assume is just like everyone on Earth gets together and sings Kumbaya and builds a one, you know, one planet empire. You've got other options, too, where you could have like a post-apocalyptic society, void dwellers, a tree of life, a, a, you know, a doomsday scenario or other things like that. But what's new with Overlord is there's these four new origin stories. One of them is subterranean, so basically you're cave dwellers, which means that building times and uh, cost increase, uh, but you actually suffer considerably less damage if you're bombarded. Another option is Slingshot to the Stars, which has a ruined quantum catapult near your home planet. Um, the this is basically a mega structure. The quantum catapult is a mega structure. Those were introduced previously in a previous Stellaris uh, DLC. Uh, but what's new with this is in the past, those mega structures all kind of came really late in the game, if you will. Uh, so this allows you to potentially access and repair and use one of these mega structures much earlier in the game. Um, and so that's sort of the pitch of that particular origin story. Another one is basically you're kind of, I guess, mentored. You go into the stars, you run into these shroud people, and they kind of mentor you along the way, uh, giving you access to, um, I, I'm assuming, more advanced technology, and you're in contact with the shroud wa uh, walker enclave. I don't know what the story is behind that. Uh, we haven't played that one. And then the other option is an imperial fiefdom, which is basically like you went into the stars and the moment you got into the stars, this much bigger, badder AI empire came along and was like, hey, you humans, you are now our vassal. You better like it. Um, and you don't really have a choice. And this feels kind of realistic to me, like a realistic scenario where humanity's first venture into the stars results in us quickly becoming subjugated as part of another empire. But we also get protection from them. Uh, so it, it may have some benefits so you can see our story here that's what we're going to do the imperial fiefdom our first endeavor beyond our home planet was a painful one subjugated by and subjected to the whims of a foreign galactic power now we are looking to advance toward a future far off as it might be in which we no longer have to live in the shadow of another empire so presumably um and we're not going to mess with the rest of this stuff so presumably that is going to be uh you know um a situation where we want to become independent but 
these other people are much more powerful than us. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. We are playing Iron Man, which leaves achievements on. Uh, we're playing in a huge galaxy, so a thousand stars. Um, but we are going to come into a game which, instead of it like being the sort of the base game uh, where you're just exploring the stars and have never seen anything beyond, we're going to have relationships with this empire that is our, our, our I guess, overseer or overlord. So you can see here we get a little bit more story here as we stepped out of our home system for the first time we were approached by a foreign empire who demanded our subjugation though a painful memory for our people uh, we have learned a lot in a short time as a vassal with the relationship pro uh, proving more beneficial than we could have hoped for we're not the only vassal of our new overlord as we have had the chance to meet diplomats and ambassadors from some of the other empires under their thumb we do not see quite this. Uh, we do not see quite eye to eye with some of them, uh, but we believe they will pr prove to be useful allies for the time being. Though we are looking forward to a day where we uh, once again can dictate our own future. So again, in the general, in the base game, you kind of are going to the stars for the first time, um, at least when the game first came out, and you were meeting all, you know, running into foreign, you know empires or whatnot for the first time and this was all brand new for you and so you you know your first encounter of life or other things like that were big events well that's not the case in this case we can see our galaxy is here our home system is hiveron uh, and then the empire that we are subjugated to is over here the holy sedimentan empire um and then if you see here actually if we hover over our name it says vassals under the holy cinnamon and empire so you can see who we're vassals of and then we can see some other similar i, I guess single system kingdoms uh, we've got the uh Kahanans palinate we've got the prince electorate of the amarconians uh the kingdom of the farines and the mirish league so these are all different uh civilizations or, or empires that we have met and they are all subjugated under the three system holy sediment empire uh, meanwhile we have a little bit of exploration it looks like in some of the nearby systems we know that there's a potentially habitable world just to the southeast of us but if we zoom out here it looks like we are on the northwestern portion of the galaxy here you can see all of these star systems and whatnot are unexplored and we are kind of i guess we're all buffer states for this empire which i suppose is a realistic strategy if you were running an empire now we have to go ahead let's go back into our oops. let's go back into our system here you can see we do have a small fleet to start with of 110 military power uh, we also have a um, station a star station or a, i guess a space station uh, in the galaxy as well um, and then we've got a, a construction and a science ship available to us uh, we have a mining station already working our home planet, I believe, is Hiveron over here, uh, which you can see is an Arctic world. That's kind of interesting for uh, for our humanoid species. Uh, but it is uh, an Arctic world. It's our empire capital. And uh, you can see here there are four different districts in it. An agriculture district, a mining district, a uh, generator district, uh, an industrial district, and a city district. Um, the planet currently has three three city districts and has 11 of a, a potential 15 districts built so it looks like you got three city two industrial uh, two generators two mining and two agriculture so that would be yeah, 11 11 of 15. And meanwhile we have a planetary administration administration offices research labs and commercial zones all currently built you can see planetary production here between energy um, there's a whole bunch of different resources you've got energy you've got minerals you've got food consumer goods alloys and then you have sort of your empire traits which are influence uh, unity and then you have different traits for like how much research you've done of different technologies or things like that um, and then i think we have up to three star bases or capacity up to 20 naval ships initially our population is 28 pops of the Vor people. Um, and then we have uh, two envoys currently. Uh, and our empire size is 44, 11 from districts, one from our system, one from our colony, uh, and 28 from pops. So total empire size 44. I'm not sure. 
as long as it's under 100, it looks like there's no modifications. So that's good. All right, so first things first, I'd like to go ahead and choose my research stuff. So we're gonna go and look at our research here. Uh, so we, we have three different kinds of research uh, that we can do simultaneously. Let's go ahead and select research for Khan Ven, one of our scientists here. And we can take a look at the um, you know options that they have. We can do a quantum theory, uh, which increases uh, researchers by 20%. Uh, we can do we can do a zero g laboratories which increases research station output um, global energy management i'm going to do that because that will uh, make our energy uh, i believe more efficient it looks like it is one planetary limit it costs 400 minerals and 360 uh, what is that 360 research i'm guessing but it uh, technicians produce energy credits so um, I think that'll be useful to have. It's going to take us 96 months to do. Society research here. Let's work on increasing naval capacity, I guess. If we want to break free of these people. Actually, let's work on getting more research. Because then that'll let us snowball. So this research out output will be of more research. And for industry... Army damage increase, mining station. Let's do mining station output. Also, it'll unlock the nebula refinery. So we're researching those three different things. You can see there's various research times, 96 months, 67 months, and 63 months. That's all underway. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our science ship. We jumped out to the galaxy screen. We're going to go ahead and right click on the nearest system, which might have a habitable planet in it. Uh, Toraville, I want to get there before these other... Um, empires potentially do so we'll go ahead and right click there and then go tell our survey ship to go ahead and research uh, or survey that system we'll go back into our home system here and uh, make sure that we've got the construction ship set to build a research or a mining station um, wait we already have a research station there never mind Mining station there, we're, so we're producing the five minerals on this. So different planets have different outputs or different resources here. So we're going to go ahead and build a mining station on Postum, um, and then probably a research station over here to get that, I guess, is it like mechanical research, it looks like? Or is it just research generally? Engineering research, okay. It's been a while since I played Stellaris. Just need to refresh myself on some of this stuff. Um... We actually should also go to Isla Mag because there's some good energy resources there at level 5. Level 2 is not great for engineering research, but we still have some some places to uh, to go in our particular empire before, you know, uh, before we reach out to additional star systems. I do think I want to build a couple of ships here, though, so let's go ahead and construct um, some new shipping. Go to our shipyard. And we will build, I think, one new construction ship. And I guess I don't really have the resources to build another science ship. So instead, let's, can I, let's just build a new science ship. I guess it costs a hundred alloys, which we're currently producing 12 of. Anyway, but we're still paused. So let's go ahead and unpause here. And we'll go with, uh, Incoming transmission from the Holy Cinnamon Empire. Welcome, dear newfound allies. We felt it was only right to contact you now that you have chosen to partake in our alliance. It pleases us you choose to see reason rather than forcing our hand toward violence. So how should we respond? We can have a friendly response, a neutral response, or a hostile one. You didn't give us much of a chance, did you? Um, it'll give. It'll reduce their opinion of us. We can be proud to be part of our their alliance, which will increase their opinion of us. So that seems easily uh, easy enough. And we are proud to welcome you. After careful consideration, we have decided to invest a significant amount of resources into helping you specialize your empire. It would enable your empire to play an important role in the future of our friends and allies. 
We're not entirely sure what your uh, what your people would be more comfortable with, however. A militarized specialization, a scholarly one, or are you more interested in materials and minerals? So we can choose our specialty here as a vassal. Um, a military-focused deal sounds perfect. Uh, they will give us, uh, it will convert to a bulk work specialist focused on military and defense. Uh, I believe this is another new feature of Overlord where you can specialize your vassals. Um, you can receive a fleet of destroyers and the technology necessary to craft more. Wow, that would be kind of cool. Destroyers are pretty sweet. Um, we could also do scholarly stuff, which will be more focused on like research and whatnot. Um, we'll receive a science ship and a scientist from the Cinnamon Empire. Or we can uh, focus on material and minerals, which will receive two construction ships uh, and um, we'll pay influence uh, t uh, influence tithe for expanding. Do we always pay an influence tithe for expanding? Yeah, it looks like it. In any event, I think I'd rather go with the mineral route. Economy, 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 right? Um, what is prospect if we say that? I'm going to call them an empire which specializes in finding minerals and manufacturing strategic resources, but often at the cost of advancing their empire scientifically. With the right tools, some of the Prospectora has been able to locate raw materials that others overlook, though there's only uh, a rumor. That's only a rumor we've heard. Yeah, let's do that. Let's be mineral Incoming people. Transmission. Incoming transmission, huh? Specialization Incoming started transmission. here. Let's actually pause for a second. So we have five agree. The Holy Cinnamon Empire's five agreements and five holdings. You can see their different uh, uh, vassals over here on the left. You can see we are a prospectorum. Um, so you can see our negative research penalty, I guess, or a subsidy matching 30% of their monthly research. So we get a subsidy there. The subject will pay 30% of tax of their monthly advanced production to the Overlord. We will pay 30%. So it looks like we'll pay 30% of our alloys and consumer goods as a tithe. And we will pay 30% of our energy, minerals, and food as a tithe. Meanwhile, they will give us 30% research. And, or I guess, yeah. Uh, and strategic is zero, so there's no subsidy or not. Okay. So we could negotiate terms in 59 months, it looks like. Really, we have a holding limit of one? That's bullshit. Our loyalty to them is negative 34. It'll increase over time. Anyway, so we have these construction ships. Might as well, you know, construct stuff on the rest of our... Oh, that's right. Oh, shit. Are we really going to be negative of, of minerals or of consumer goods? Okay. Establish an embassy. Sure. I don't see any reason not to. So we'll be establishing embassies with different vassals of these folks. Our borders are open. They open their borders to us. Research agreement proposal. So this is one of the other subjects of the Holy Cinnamon Empire, so we'll agree to that. We're all one big happy family. I really need more consumer goods now. Also, we're negative on food. Fudgesicle. So if I go to Hiveron... We are building a new mine, which will give us more minerals, but we need more food. Can I... 
I can't build anything new because I don't have enough minerals. So I guess as we mine that, that'll that'll get better. Um, we need more consumer goods. I'm assuming, yeah, I don't have enough resources for any of these buildings. So we're going to have to give it some time. I can't even really use those construction chips that I just got for free, so maybe that was a poor Receiving transmission. decision. I'm good with commercial treaties. Online. There we go. That mine is online. So can I go buy more of these resources? Let's go ahead and pause again. So we're low or we're, we're low on consumer goods. So if I go here, I can go ahead and buy 50 consumer goods for energy, which we are positive on. So I can buy 50 consumer goods for, um, what is this gonna cost? Yeah, so it'll buy me time. And we can also set it up automatically. So go ahead and buy a hundred consumer goods at the cost of most of my energy. And that'll buy me time to get the minerals that I need to build the stuff I wanna build so that I can be more self-sufficient, I think. Anyway, that's the theory I'm operating on. Because what I would like to do is probably build, I don't know if I need to build more alloys, but I do need to build more consumer goods. Converted to the specialization. Sure. Receiving transmission. I keep clicking all these agreements. Migration. Oh, I just closed that. Uh, new branch office. The Mirish League Mega Corporation has established a new branch office in Hiveron. I'm fine with sharing most of this stuff with my neighboring vassals because I'm not going to go to war with them. But what I do need more of is definitely more consumer goods and then food. I mean, I guess I could just keep buying this stuff. We do produce considerably more energy than we need. What? Mass extinction. So this is part of the story, I'm assuming. Our first stumbling steps into the void beyond Hiveron were not motivated solely by curiosity or a desire to conquer the unknown, or a need to leave our mark on the galaxy. The biosphere of Hiveron has undergone rapid changes in the past few centuries, and prominent scientists warn that Hiveron may be faced with beginnings of a mass extinction event, that cyclical purging of life that is inseparable from planetary existence in the greater cosmos. A research plan has been put together to study a number of... Uh, planets rendered uninhabitable by major astronomical incidents or planet-bound catastrophe. Uh, we hope that by restructuring these events, or reconstructing these events, a similar fate may be avoided for Hiveron and the Vor race. It falls to you, uh, you as Chief Science Officer of the Vor Technocracy to ensure that this expedition is carried out. Council the Situation Log. Situation Log updated. To avoid a potential apocalypse, we must study the effects that major calamities have had on other planets. Okay. I don't have a science, like this science ship I believe is... Oh, I did build another. Oh, 
I don't have a scientist. Busy serving, meeting, meeting. So we've got a physics researcher, society researcher, engineering researcher, or tourist. Can we recruit another scientist? It'll cost me a hundred influence and two influence upkeep. Or I guess that's technically unity. So we'll assign a scientist and then have them go survey that new system. I don't know if like the nearby systems is what I need to research or or what. But if we go to the situation log, I don't I think maybe it's just researching five other planetary bodies. Or maybe we have to find planets that were made extinct or something. In any event. I don't care if you guys want to do my well, these aren't even... These are just between the other vassals. Transmission. Defensive pact. Sure. Incoming transmission. I'm just going to accept anything that comes from my... The vassals around me. System charted. Okay, with that system being charted, it doesn't... So it doesn't look like that particular planet... So I've got with, with multiple science ships now. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's set up a queued research for this guy. He's going to research these two nearby systems. This guy's going to veer northeast and go out this direction. It doesn't actually queue up that way, does it? Just do one at a time then. I thought you could cue them like that. Okay, so we're researching this stuff. Meanwhile, I'm working on getting my minerals up. I think we gotta get back we gotta get over 400 I think for the stuff I wanted to build so we're just waiting a little bit we're playing on fast speed there's multiple speed levels you can choose from this is a pretty quick flowing one I think okay so this uh, leader gained a new trait System adaptable surfeit. leadership experience gain is plus 25 percent okay let's go survey this one Yeah, commercial packs are fine. Trade is good. All right, so we're over 400. So let's go ahead and see if we want to build anything. Okay. We need an additional 94 resources to build another industrial district. Costs 500. Artisans turn minerals into consumer goods. We have two industrial districts. Okay, we can also clear some of these blockers, I think. So we'll clear these two blockers instead. 
It's like it costs energy. And it creates more pops. You know, I guess we could really go down the uh, strategic resource discovered. The Kal Tuman has discovered a previously unknown strategic resource on WPR 55987 dubbed Vol Volatile Mol Molfes. These preternatural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy which could be explo or exploited in energy production as fuel or even as explosives. While we don't yet possess the means to extract the resources, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploration. Okay, so that's good. One of the nearby systems has that strategic resource. I believe that's the system that's over here. Yeah. So there's not really another empire that is close to it yet. Traditions are available, so we can go here. Um, let's go ahead and select a tradition. Do we want to do domination? I mean, since we're probably going to be limited in how much we can move outside of our system because we're vassals, I'm kind of of the opinion that we might want to go with domination because I think it'll give us a better ability to build up in our current system rather than you know building tall rather than than wide so it gives us more rulers more edict fund reduce upkeep let's go with prosperity with reducing uh yeah, we'll go with prosperity. Alright. So Hyron, are we still we're still clearing these wastelands? Yeah, low stockpile of consumer goods I know. So we'll buy more of that. Okay. Sand chips are still researching. Just waiting on clearing those those districts. We made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Irrealian system. For now, we've codenamed the them Iota aliens until we can find out more about them. Okay. News of the aliens and human ships are humming through the ether. So where did we run into them? Over here to the east. Okay. Greet him with open arms, increases first contact discovery speed. Wise to be cautious. Ward off those who would threaten us. Uh, wise to be cautious. I mean, we've, so I guess if you think about it, if we're role playing as our people, the first time we went out into space, we immediately got subjugated. So we're probably not going to be like, yay, more aliens. Let's go open, you know, go to open arms. So I don't know if we'd immediately go to aggression because we were overwhelmed in our initial run. So that probably feels like that would be something we wouldn't do. But I do think we'd be cautious. We'd be like, I don't know about this. Let's hold off for a moment and try and avoid them. Okay. So I believe we cleared those blockers. Oops. Yeah, 
it looks like we cleared those blockers. Is there one more industrial wasteland? We got a very healthy surplus energy budget, surplus minerals. I need to work on consumer goods. So we can have civilian industries, which increases our civilian good output. There is a mineral cost to that. Additionally, we could just go to the industrial district here. And build another industrial district on the planet. So we'll see how that affects things. Anomaly detected. Um, mine the minerals. Interesting. Yeah, research that. Industrial district has an upkeep of energy, but turns minerals into consumer goods and minerals into alloys. I think that's better than building that factory. Stockpile of consumer goods. It appears the asteroid that we were just researching, the anomaly, Surrounding debris originate from a former planet. Deep within the center of the asteroid, we can find traces of an extremely valuable alloy. There's also hints of bacterial life that has now died in the vacuum of space. This shows us that the celestial body once bore the promise of life. Yeah, we still haven't uncovered any of those... So we're using up more food now than before. We're working on the industrial district here. You can see we're cruising through the days here. New technology discovered. Nice. So research is done there for engineering. Rather than going down like the military line, let's do geothermal fracking. Increases minerals from miners in starbase construction. So we'll do that really going down the economic route rather than warfare because again we're vassals so presumably we'll have some protect we have some protection meanwhile society research we completed that let's go ahead and increase our food so food from farmers up 20 percent food from starbase construction up we could increase our naval capacity but again gonna focus on eco sim uh, simulation here uh, imminent situation what's consumer good shortage crap Right. That makes people unhappy. Okay. Go buy some. Don't worry, we're buying them from the market. From our uh, overlords or whatever. A little bit of a slow start for my game so far. Actually, I think my science ships need new directives. So we'll go over here. Let's go research this system. Research this system already, right? Not a ton of resources in neighboring systems. Two energy, three minerals, one strategic resource, two energy, three research, two energy, two minerals, two trade value. Max ex mass extinction chili planet. The planet of interest in this system is covered in the layer 
in layer upon layer of dense ice crystals varying composition apparently it was once home to a more varied and ple pleasant biomes a special project has been issued to investigate the possibility so if we go to the mass extinction thing here we can see we can research chili we need to have a science assigned to it though with one scientist in orbit so that's up here i think Our science is here, so we can go have it, have it research the project there. Another tradition, so we can go ahead and unlock reduced upkeep. Research project concluded. An unnatural shift in the atmosphere's chemical makeup resulted in the slow but irreversible onset of the ice age. One that began before the formation of the Vor technocracy and is likely to persist long after our passing. The exact cause remains unknown, but the probable explanations include failed terraforming attempts or even intraplanetary terrorism. Some of the more radical elements within the scientific community of Hiverion suggest that the dramatic climate shift may have been brought on by unchecked emissions of gaseous industrial byproduct into the atmosphere this view is confined to the scientific fringe as it is unlikely that any race intelligent enough to achieve full industrialization would be stupid enough to accidentally wipe themselves out that feels like a <laughs> climate change commentary let's survey the system so that's one of the five research uh I guess missions here for the broken planets that we have to research here to uncover the mass extinction piece. Oh boy, low stability. My stability level, where are you at? So amenities, negative six. Apparently my people are not all happy. Why not? Do I need to like build them amenities? theater we do that there's an upkeep cost shortage and a consumer good shortage so we are low on food that's probably also why we're unstable here let's buy 500 food so i find myself just buying more of all of these resources because i don't have enough to keep things flowing on its own and energy is the only thing we really are super plentiful now and although i guess we have a fair amount of alloys as well but look at that guys we've actually been going close to an hour now so i'm actually going to go ahead and wrap this video up uh, this is very much me just getting back into the swing of things here just sort of uh re returning to stellaris if you will it's been a while since i played it but with the overlord expansion i did want to check that out i think the idea of being a vassal is pretty interesting and we'll have to see how this plays out i think this will be the first video in a new series uh please leave your thoughts down below though guys and uh, as a reminder if you're interested in checking solaris out this weekend there's a link in the description uh you can go ahead and click that it'll take you to the steam page where you can download the base game of stellars for free uh we are playing stellars overlord and another th shout out and thank you to the folks at paradox for sponsoring this video until next time this is the historical gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching and i think we'll continue this series on live stream so catch me on my twitch channel uh, where we will continue this series maybe tonight um but until then this is the historical gamer once again saying thank you for watching and until next time i'm out